Hello everyone and welcome back to this edition of making graphics better for the web with Photoshop. In the last video we took a plain old H1 tag that was at the top of this page it said Kentucky Derby bound and instead we looked how big the div was we went to Photoshop created a file that was the same size as the div put text in Photoshop where we could apply some styles to it such as the stroke the embossing and the shadow that you see here and hopefully that makes your graphics look better. We're now going to do the same thing to this photo. I want to just put a drop shadow on it so it looks like it's sort of three-dimensional levitating off the page. So we'll do that by going to Photoshop. And I'm going to start a new file. So I'm going to say File. Well, actually, I'm going to open my photo, which I already have. Right? And there is the photo. Um, now, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that that photo is the size that it is supposed to be. And you'll do that by going back to your HTML and up in your CSS section, whether it's internal or in an external sheet, look at the size of the div that that photo is fitting in. And here is the div declaration up top in the CSS. It says the width is 400 and the height is 400. So I'm going to come back to Photoshop now, now that I know how big to make it. And I'm going to make sure that I get my crop tool, and I'm going to make sure that this photo goes to 400 by 400 px. So there's 400 px, and there's 400 px. Uh, wait a second here. 400 px and 400 no space. It doesn't like the space. And then I have it, and so when I hit enter, it makes sure that it's 400 by 400 pixels. Okay, remember if you double click on the hand over here towards the bottom of the toolbar on the left hand side, it'll increase the size of the picture to the size uh, to fill the screen so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to put a drop shadow on this. Here's what you do you're going to come up here to where it says uh, edit, and you're going to come down to transform and select scale because we want to change the size of this a little bit to make room for the drop shadow. The drop shadow is going to extend to the right and down a little bit. So now I have these handles where I can resize the photo. I'm going to come to the lower left, I'm sorry, the lower right, hold down my shift key so it stays proportionate and drag this picture in a little bit. Just like that. No magical distance. I'm just making an educated guess that the drop shadow will be roughly that size. So once I've done that, I've made room for the drop shadow to show up and be within my div. I make sure that that layer is selected. It's called layer zero. If I want to rename that layer, because many times in Photoshop you can end up with many, many, many layers. You can simply uh, double click on the words. And I'm just going to call this photo. I know what layer it is. All right, so I make sure that photo is selected, the layer is selected. I'm going to come down to the bottom of this pane over here and click on the FX. And I see drop shadow. I'm going to click right on drop shadow. And when I do that, I get the dialog box that come up. And the first thing I'm going to look at is what direction is the sun shining, so where is the shadow going? Well, right now it says it's over here at about 2.30, so the, you can see, sort of see at the bottom of the screen, the shadow is going to the left. I don't want that. I want to put the sun over about 10.30, so the shadow is coming this way. To help you see where the shadow is, if you change the opacity up to 100%, it will make it pure black. And now you can probably see it better along the edge of the photo. So then I have three things that I can adjust on it. The spread, which is how far away it is from the picture, and I can slide that to where I want to get it. Uh, I'm sorry, that was the distance. The spread, which sort of increases its size, and then the one that actually increases the size of the area that's fading. Okay, So I don't want to increase the area of it's fading too much. I'm going to make it something just like that. I'm going to adjust the distance back a little bit so I see a little bit of the shadow, something like that. And I'm going to say OK. And I'm hoping that's going to look good on the web page. If not, I will come back and adjust it. To be able to come back to adjust it, remember you need to have two files saved. First of all, we're going to save this thing. So I'm going to hit a Save As. I want to make sure that this down here where it says File Type is a Photoshop document. And it's called Me and Reese No Shadow. Well, that this one, this is Me and Reese with a shadow. So I'm going to 
change that. So me and Reese with the shadow, and it's a Photoshop document, and I save it. Now, the reason I'm doing it as a Photoshop document is I can open a Photoshop document and come right back in and start changing things that I have done to it. Once I export it as a ping or a JPEG, those files, you cannot come back in and make any of these changes. These will have disappeared. So you want to have the Photoshop document filed, but I also, for the web page, need to do a export, quick export as a ping. And so I come down to export, quick export as a ping. I'm going to make sure that this is going where I want it. This is me and Reese with a shadow. So it's going to have the same name as a Photoshop document, but this is going to be a PNG file, and I hit save. Now, if I come back to my HTML, all right, down here I have the div in my HTML section. It's called photo. In there, there's an image called me, Reese, no shadow ping. Well, we're going to save that, change that to the file I just saved, which is me and Reese shadow ping. And I'll save this file, and I will browse it and see what the heck it looks like. And now you can see the drop shadow besides the photo. And I don't like that drop shadow. It's much too dark, especially compared to the one above it. So this is why I saved it as a Photoshop document. I can go back into Photoshop. Right there it is. I say, hmm, well, I'm going to go back and change the opacity. So I come over here to my layers, and I find my drop shadow. And if I double click on it, it will open it up. And that's what I did. I forgot to change the opacity back down after I had changed it to 100% so I could see it. So I'm going to take it down to, say, 67. I'll say OK. I'll do a quick. Now, if I look here to file name, I'm in the Photoshop document. So I'll just do a quick file save to update that. And I'll do another file export. Quick export is a ping. I can pick the, I should pick the exact same name, me Reese with a shadow. And I say save. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to replace? And I say yes. So it replaces the one in my folder that my code is already referring to. So all I have to do is come back to my web page and refresh it, and I can see that shadow starting to change. So now I'm starting to get the effect of the drop shadow so it looks a little bit better. And I can keep tweaking that as many times as I want till I get it way I, looking the way I want it to. As long as I have the Photoshop document saved, I can easy come in, make the tweaks. I'm going to change the distance from 13 to like 10. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to do a quick file save of my Photoshop document. I'm going to do a quick export as a ping. Keep it the exact same name. Save it. Replace it. Yes. Come back to the browser. Refresh. See my changes, and I'm liking it better. So that's how you add a drop shadow to a photo in Photoshop.